Remember a few weeks ago when we began this study, I asked you to consider this question as you read the text each day. Where are you seeing good news in this text? Another way of saying that is, where are you seeing gospel in this text? There's a lot to pay attention to in this particular text in Acts chapter 8. Um, there's the persecution of the church beginning here, the introduction of Saul, uh, the coming of faith to the Samaritans, a people historically quite despised. There's this really interesting space between believing and baptism and then the coming of the Holy Spirit among the Samaritans, a space that we don't uh, typically attend to in our understanding of faith. Uh, there's a miracle worker's conversion. A, a lot of things for you to pay attention to as you're searching for the good news of this text in our day. There are two things I want to note that I think are really pertinent to our time right now. Uh, one is verse 4. Now those who were scattered went from place to place proclaiming the word. Uh, and when I read this piece here about the apostles being scattered, the faithful experiencing a scattering, uh, it made me think about us right now uh, being scattered all over the place in our homes, some of us having gone uh, home to other states and even other countries uh, in order to wait out this period of pandemic scattering. And I wondered as I read this text, what does it mean to practice faithfulness uh, in bringing good news during a time of scattering? And in a very real sense, as this is the story of the church becoming the church, periods of scattering seem to be a part of the church's DNA. What does it mean for us to be bringing good news during this period of our own scattering? The second thing I wanted to lift up as you read the text this morning is uh, the, the notion of searching for demonic intentions where they cannot be found. Willie Jennings has a very interesting statement here about uh, the historic Christian interpretation of this story of Simon, this miracle worker who came to faith uh, when the disciples came to visit. Jennings says, part of a wider tragic Christian history of poor mapping of the demonic in the world. That poor mapping taught Christians to approach the unknown with suspicion and what they perceived as strange was demon imprinted or at least completely vulnerable to demonic attack and possession and it made me think of a lot of uh, messages I've been seeing from Christian preachers and evangelists and I know this is not something you all are very prone to thinking and believing and uh, and leaning into but I've been seeing a lot of interpretations of uh, this COVID-19 pandemic as some sort of uh, demonic force that needs to be uh, cast out. I even saw one preacher, uh, evangelist, uh, sort of um, blowing uh, the Spirit of God out of his mouth into the face of the pandemic and a whole bunch of things like that. I get uh, caught up watching these things sometimes on, on YouTube because they're just so interesting uh, to see how people interpret and react in the face of these kinds of uh, these kinds of difficulties and of course the really awful interpretations of the virus as some sort of punishment from God uh, because of homosexuality or all the typical things that people uh, tend to, uh, to blame for earthquakes and hurricanes and apparently even viruses. But if you look at this text of Simon that we have as Christians often interpreted as something demonic happening, he was a miracle worker that the disciples or the apostles here didn't reprimand for doing what he was doing prior to their showing up. Uh, what they reprimanded him for was wanting that power for himself. And I think that's a very important inter interpretation here, is that this is really about something with regard to Simon's need for the power that he saw the disciples wielding and the ability to attract a crowd, which if you ask me, it sounds a lot like uh, some of the preachers and evangelists who are uh, wrongfully interpreting this virus. Uh, but look at what happens at the end of this text, where Simon prays or asks uh, uh, Peter to pray for me to the Lord that nothing of what you have said may happen to me. 
there is something genuinely uh, uh, willing uh, on Simon's part to lean into the mystery of what he has experienced with the Apostle's visit to the Samaritans to let go a little bit of his power and his ability to attract a crowd and to experience the, the movement of the Spirit in his life. So I want to ask you as you read the text this morning, where is the good news for you in the scattering and in the unknown of this hour? I'd love to hear from you uh, about your thoughts with regard to that question.